Praise the Lord. Now I have a message from God for you. You say, who? I mean you. Tell someone. He says, you. The message is for you. Welcome. And the title of my message is Jesus is the source of your faith. Amen. Jesus is the source of your faith. So when you realize your faith is fading, what do you do? You go back to the source. Amen. And you know where the source is. It's all about the finished work at Calvary. He took care of our sins and the consequences of sin. That's why they say it's finished work. Sometimes when it comes to the consequences of sin, we are not really sure. But things like depression is a consequence of sin. When we sin, and other things evolve out of that activity of sin, becomes the consequences. And Jesus dealt with all this. This is what you and I have got to believe. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And your faith is so important. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to start by looking at a man in the, in the Bible. Have you heard of the name Elijah? Yes. Some say Elias. is the same name. Elijah. So if we turn to 1 Kings chapter 19, we read verses 1 and 2. I'll pick up the story of Elijah. And I, this message, message is a bit long, so we'll continue next week, okay? And I'm sure you'll be blessed. Because I was so, so touched, so, so blessed preparing the message. I'm waiting for the people behind the desk. We can see them, but they are doing a lot. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with a sword. You know Isis. You sever the head from the shoulders. Two. So Jezebel sent a message to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Now when you talk about Elijah, you talk about faith. This was a man who carried faith in his heart. Then why this message? Because there was a time in Israel, something they call in religion, secretism, syncretism, meaning there's a mixture of theologies. Here in this country, we call something secularism. You've heard about that. And it means they are changing the laws of the country. They start gently before they realize they've taken over. Did you ever think that woman will marry woman in this day? Not quite 10 years ago, they started. Now man can marry man, and woman can marry woman. Before, we never thought about this. So they are shifting the basis of our faith. This was what was happening. Things were so terrible. So Elijah, the man of faith, goes to the king, King Ahab, 
His wife is Jezebel. Someone says, doesn't that name sound sinful? I haven't come across anyone with that name here yet. He says to him, that was a word from the Lord. He says, as long as I live, there shall be no rain, no dew for the next thousand days. Work it out. This is not three and a half years. You are calculating. Calculate. Do that quickly. It keeps you alive and awake for me. For the next thousand days. And he, le he left. God showed him where to hide himself. King Ahab and Jezebel have sent messages and messengers throughout the neighboring countries. And he comes with a warning. If you are hiding Elijah, and that comes to notice the whole country, nation will be punished. And Ahab was no small king. He was quite a big king with the influence. So they've gone around everywhere. And meanwhile, Elijah, <laughs> raving beds were cooking for Elijah somewhere. In my language, you say, chung kwe, chung mai. He doesn't do any work. He lies there. And then the raven, the black beds, will bring him bread. Eh, hot bread. It's not like a warbotting or what? what <laughs> warbotting. Which, how many of you eat the warbotting? The one they slice. Shoo, shoo, shoo. There were big ones, there are lean ones, there are medium ones, and uh, uh, the Tesco type, you pick one, it's 84, 84p. You go somewhere, it's about 1.20. Before, before it was, when I was there, it was 17p. You take one, two, the whole week. Now they've, they've lost weight. <laughs> See you. You put it in the oven and in no time the oven goes pew and it's flying. No way, nothing. But this time God was bringing him hot. Amen. I was in Lebanon in 1979. And I went to Beirut to transact business for the battalion. And there was a little bread shop somewhere. And the bread is baked on stone. It's soft and gentle. They use olive oil. And they put olives and, uh, is it? Cottage cheese. And then they roll it. That was my food, Elijah. My body was so lean. Meanwhile, they were fighting in Ghana, and no good news was coming from Ghana. And that was what I was saying. One day I went there, and the place was closed. Closed. I say, "Aja, it's not expensive." And I went like, "Aja, what am I going to eat?" But Elijah was feeding on this every day, morning and evening. He was there. He saw the water running out. The water dried up. And Elijah wanted to complain to God. Even before he opened his mouth, he said, get out of here and go to Zarephath. Go to Lebanon. There is a widow woman I've prepared to look after you. God too can be crazy, don't you realize? If he wants to send you somewhere, won't you send you to the house of a, a king or a chief somewhere? But to a widow woman, Elijah approaches and saw this woman collecting dry sticks. And said, hi, girl. Thank you. <laughs> it's unisex, brother. <laughs> hi, girl. Would you bring me some water? He looks at him. When you see Elijah, you know he's Elijah, isn't he? with the beard and the, and the staff. As she was leaving, he said, and bake me a morsel of bread. And the woman goes, uh-uh. 
kilo day. <laughs> even how I was going to get the, manage the water, I don't, I'm not even sure yet. Now you want bread? He said, look, I have a handful of flour. Let's see a handful. Handful. You can put gari flour or corn flour. Handful. And a bit of oil. And the sticks I've collected. We, me and my son, we're going to cook this and eat it and die. I said, girl, well said, but cook for me first. <laughs> for this is what the Lord says. Your bread being and your oil jar will never waste out. Amen. And the woman sheepishly or stupidly looks at the man of God and she says, yo. <laughs> and she goes to prepare Elijah the cake. And the son was just around, runs back to mama. Say, mommy, there's flour in the jar. There's more oil. And while people were dying of famine, hunger around them, the three of them were eating every day. Why am I talking about this? Because Elijah was a man of faith. But something happened and Aunt Jezebel sent a message. How come this man of faith should be shaken by the message from this wicked woman? There are times things happen to us. Are you hearing me? And you are shaking to your roots, but I tell you, your roots is Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't look elsewhere. Run back to him. When I say see you, you call back and say, look, oh. you see, you bring some cold air into this place. I can't handle this affair. Look, everybody is gone. As if I gave you that heavy breakfast. I, did, I, I wasn't in your home. You said I'm in the spirit. I said I have a message from the Lord. I have a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. He's always trusted in his God. Now, the situation of the time was that nobody was sure who was real God. Whether Tigari was the real God or whatever it is, Tigari is the God from my tribe back in Accra. Some are going to the church and they still consorted the Tigari. And some are still doing what I'm calling. It doesn't happen in your country too. Which part of your country? Look at that. He say 100%. It's happening everywhere, 100%. 
And we thought we traveled to England to leave those things behind. And they tell us they walked on the seabed to London. So there's so much fear around us all over the place. It's not you alone. It happened to Elijah. He was running. But I'm tracing where Elijah came from. So from there, from this widow's woman's house, God says, go and show yourself to King Ahab. The whole country has been looking for him for over three years now. Go and show yourself to Ahab, and I'll bring down heavy rain upon the land. Meanwhile, Ahab, chief administrator, called Obadiah. Somebody say Obadiah. Obadiah. Or Obadiah. Say it, say it. Obadiah. He is instructed Obadiah to go around everywhere where, if he could find some grass for the animals to graze. Obadiah feared God. And he took 50 prophets of God, hid them in a cave. Another 50 hid them in a cave. And he was sending them food regularly. Remember, Jezebel was there. So his movements were all calculated. Because if Jezebel heard about this, ISIS. As Elijah was walking towards the palace, he bumped into Obadiah. And Obadiah says, hey, Obadiah recognized him. Hey. Elijah says, go and tell Ahab I'm in town. Look at the confidence. He was standing on something. He has believed in a God who is unshakable. He has believed in a God who is unmovable. He has believed in a God who is there today, was there yesterday, was there. Will be forever. That is better English. Obadiah goes, oh, what have I done wrong? He said, what do you mean? He said, if I go to tell Ahab that I've seen you, and I say, you wait here, and he's coming for you, who knows, the Spirit of God will carry you somewhere else, and I will lose my head. He said, sir, what have I done wrong? He said, you go and tell Ahab, I'm coming. I'll see him. So he goes to tell Ahab, Obadiah is in town. So Obadiah goes to tell the, the king that uh, Elijah is in town. So Elijah comes to him. As soon as he showed up, this is what the king said, Oh, you the troubler of Israel. He was blaming Elijah. I said, me, the troubler of Israel, is you and your family and your cronies. If you can talk like this to the king, how come his wife sends you a, a message and you start fleeing? No, when you are running away, you run, but when you are flipping, when you are fleeing, you go as light as possible. Whilst you're running, you throw your headgear away. You're running, you throw your winter coat away. You're running, you throw your shirt away. You're running, you kick your boot away. And you go on bare, barefoot. What has happened to Elijah? We're talking about his faith. 
who will advise Elijah of our faith? You know, the Bible tells us Jesus and uh, his, his three disciples were on Mount Tobit. I've been there before. When you stand there on a high hill, you see the whole valley of Jezreel. And you have 4,000 years of history right in front of you. And they were there. All of a sudden, they noticed that Jesus had company. Elijah was standing there. Moses was also standing there. Moses didn't cross over to Canaan. Because God said, you, you can only see, but you can't you can set foot there. But because of Jesus, he was standing in heaven. Amen. Jesus is so important to your faith. Amen. You say the whole place, the bodies were shining. Shining, whiter than snow. What is whiter than snow? I was in Africa, I didn't know what was snow. In the, mi- in the mid winter. <laughs> Were you not singing that too? <laughs> and the Russians sent us snow plows. In Ghana, there has never been snow before. That's what the Russians brought. In 1981, October around this time, I woke up. I was in this military university. I woke up, parted the curtain. It was white outside. Nobody told me this is how is. I went to the other side, checked the, it's white outside. I said, am I going crazy? And I start pacing back and forth. I saw someone, I said, did you see outside? He said, what? I said, it's all white. They started laughing at me, it's snow. <laughs> Jesus' body and, and the, two, the three of them was as white as snow. Then Elijah vanished. Moses vanished. And who was left? Jesus. And there was a cloud. You saw a cloud this morning. Why are you here? Is it still outside? Fog. Hey, look. <laughs> Folks, uh, permit me. I come from Africa. You see? It looks like a cloud for me. <laughs> <laughs> so did you see the fog this morning? Yes. You have great faith. Then you came through it. God bless your heart. I saw Sister F- Sarah at the entrance, and I said, Sarah, it looks like we are in your village in Ghana, Kwau Mountains. It's always like this, peaceful and calm. Jesus was standing alone, and the voice of God rang out. This is my beloved son. Hear him. He is greater than Moses. He is greater than Elijah. He is the fount of life. Amen. So if there's something wrong with your faith, go back to the source. Amen. And Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. 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 Probably I'm, as I'm speaking, you are in a kind of dilemma. You don't know where to turn to. Don't go too far. It's close by you. I say it's close by you. Open your eyes again. Look again. Look to Jesus and live. So he told Ahab, the king, well, gather the people together and bring all your priests. Baal is the male god. And he comes from Sidon, modern day Lebanon. And his wife is Asherah. And Asherah has 450 priests. 
And they eat with Jezebel at table. And when they are eating, prophecies come from all corners. And he says, we're going to have a kind of contest. Provide us two bulls. That is a he, male cow. Bring the two. One for them, the 950 of them, and one for me. And let's raise altars. One unto God. And the other unto Baal and Ashram. And let them chop the animals, the beasts. And don't set fire to it. And the people of Israel were all listening. And they were going, oh, that's, that's fair. This is fair. F-A-I-R. This is fair. Okay, we'll see. Which one is a true God? This is fair. And then, no one says light to it. But call on your God. And the God that answers by fire, he is the God. So Elijah says the page and says, okay, since you are many, 950 of you, you start. So they started calling, Belu, Bibi, Belu, Ashura, Belu, Belu, Ashura, Belu, Belu. And they were drumming. And they were becoming frustrated. They started shouting. You know, the throat gets tired. So the volume was going down. Sister Liz, I tell you, the voice was coming down like that. And Elijah started taunting them. I said, maybe you better shout more loudly. Maybe he's gone on a trip. He's going to Barcelona. We, don't, we are not sure. Maybe he's dozing off, or maybe he's asleep. Astro Bill. And they started cutting themselves. The blood was gushing. Don't you see it in the Middle East? Blood gushing all over. They continued till late in the afternoon. And then they were fairly tired. And Elijah says, okay, let me also prepare my bull. So he prepared the altar of sacrifice that has been broken down. Elijah prepared all that. Why would he do this if he had no faith in God? I am talking of a man with great faith. But something has happened to him. That's why I'm reminding you of where he's coming from. When he finished, he said, four gallons of water should be poured around the sacrifice. They brought what I guess probably it was sea water. Because man come where they have I've been there. I've worshipped there. I've prayed for people and they've been healed there on Man Campbell with my wife and Pastor Lawrence. Can I have some water, please? <clears throat> Excuse me. He prayed a prayer. Call on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Show yourself. Let fire fall and bring the fire and God, the whole sacrifice. And let it be my God. Be my God, the God answered by fire. Let it be my God. The God that answer it by fire. The God that answer it by fire. Let him be my God. Answer it by fire. Let him be my God. The God that answer it by fire. 
One more time. The God that answered by fire. revelation of who God is. Now John the Baptist, remember John the Baptist? He kept screaming, he's coming, he's coming, the Messiah is coming, the Messiah is coming. When he started baptizing people, they sent messages, messengers from Jerusalem, Judea, and all the surrounding areas to come and check from John whether he's the Messiah. He said, I'm not. I'm only a voice in the wilderness crying. Make your path straight. I'm only a voice. I'm not he. But amongst you stands someone who is greater than I am. Even the less of his sandals, I'm not worthy to untie. This is a man who has got a revelation Amen. of who Jesus, the one. Because he says, the guy who sent me tells me, the one on whom you see the Holy Spirit resting on him, he is the guy. He is the real McCoy. Amen. And you've got him in your heart. Have you seen Jesus before? Yeah. Where did you see him? <laughs> oh, go on. Let me see the number of liars in this building. I said, have you seen Jesus before? Look, you are not sure. Open the doors and let them walk out. I said, have you seen Jesus before? I'm seeing Jesus in you. When I see you, who do I see? Look at someone and said, I see Jesus in you. No matter whatever you've done, I see Jesus in you. Eh? You think God doesn't know your past? You think his pa your past bothers him? No. Are you there? How come your past has been bothering you up to today? And I've been talking about this day. Look at my throat is dry. Better believe what the Bible says Amen. than believing your experience. And I shared something earlier on. Someone, your right hand. It looks like something wrong with the nerve endings. And your central nervous system and your nerve endings are not in agree, agreement. So receive healing right now. Are you there? Yes. I say check your hand. Shake somebody by the right hand or your left hand. See whether there's strength in that. You see, yesterday I, co I came across some people who were in our church when we started earlier on. Is it working now? Check again. Hold his, his hand and, and break his fingers. <laughs> check, check, whether well, there's power in it. No, no, Baba, not Baba, not you, it's your wife, I mean. Check, check. There's healing coming, flowing through your hands. Is it happening? Because we're going to continue this next week. So I even want to stop here. I want to stop here. I can see your ears open. You want to hear more. You, you tell someone, you, your ears sweet you. See you. Sophie just reminded me about what I said at the 9 o'clock. Um, it looks like, like someone you are about to go purchase a property or 
start buy a land or something. And uh, the word of the Lord to me was that you should cross check and be sure before you enter into that agreement, okay? If there's check in your spirit, just wait and pray for some time, okay? Until you have that freedom to move on. Because uh, it looks like uh, someone has set up, wants to set you up and uh, bring total disappointment to your path. Amen. Amen. But whatever it is, you will succeed, okay? Amen. Don't let fear reign at all. Okay. So, when the fire came out, all the Israelis say, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he is the Lord. Amen. He is the Lord. Amen. So the divided opinion became a single opinion. That distortion was removed. And when you receive Jesus, whatever you've been taking on board, where your birthday was very first uh, uh, celebrated, when I was seven years old, I told you my daddy came with a white chicken, chicken without blemish. I was looking at a chicken, just imagine, they woke you up early in the morning and they chopped the head of the chicken with blood squirting and then all over me. Another deity took care of me. He shall give his angels charge concerning you. Not me. Some demons with horns and hairs was in charge of my life. No wonder there was such a struggle until Two years later, my daddy found Jesus. Yeah. And he took all of us. And now no chicken power, but the blood, the power of the blood of Jesus. And that thing is still at work today. Now, now. What blood are you walking in? Is it goat blood or chicken or pigeon? Even the, some, in some places they cut human, human beings and then they collect the, the blood to do a kind of sacrifice for you. But the sacrifice of Jesus is the highest form of sacrifice. Whatever sacrifice was performed for you is no higher than the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus. So that is the source of your faith. Amen. Amen. And when you open your mouth to pray, believe whatever you pray in your heart. Don't doubt it. By next week we shall see more clearly. Okay? Someone said I can see clearly now that the rain is gone. You see more clearly. I can see clearly. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I'd like to end here. And we'll continue <laughs> next week. Thank you for listening to me. And I was saying earlier on, we saw these people. And one was holding a walking stick. And I saw her and I said, hey, I line up your nerve endings with your central nervous system now in the name of Jesus. Do you have pain in your body? She said, there's weakness in my right arm. In fact, I cannot cook for myself, let alone prepare tea because of my right arm. I say, chair, hold my hand. I say, break my fingers. And I went, Ajay, 
power has just shot in me. She was really breaking my fingers. Amen. And she kept doing this. I'm sure she's cooking now, today. Krisa, 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 Krisa. We are serving a living God, a living God. Who has a witness in your right hand here? You haven't received it yet. Check again. I said break is, is. No, shake it. Shake his hand. Take his right hand. Take his right hand. Baba, are you, is she hurting you? You, your skin tough like rhinoceros. Uh-uh. Okay. When it comes to your tithes, you bring 90%. To your local church. No, 10% before tax. And don't take your rent, your children fees, your this and that. I bought cloth last, last month. I haven't paid. You paid everything. And when you are left with 10 pounds, 70, 90, you take 10%. Is it not one pound? <laughs> one pound, one pound, seven p. Uh-uh. Kilo, the what is this one too? Uh, 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 uh. It takes faith to step out to do what is right. Hello? Home office says don't work till whatever your application is gone through. And he said, if they say I shouldn't work, well, well, what should I eat? So you want to try something here, 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 here. You get up and then the, the whole place is unsettled. Home office, they have groupings. They come with police and some.